and they're off. They race away then for the first of our big races of the afternoon. Three miles is the trip for the Betfair. Denman Chase, Kalashnikov in the yellow on the left, travelling strongly alongside Hitman in the white as they come to the first. Uh, all over it OK. Fanny and Destruval, grey and red colours, is chased along a little bit in the early strides of the race. And he is the back marker as they move down towards number two. The grey Eldorado Allen is bang up with the leaders as well. And Sam Brown in black and red com the colours in company with those. Then does he know from Zanza? And best turned out when Fanny and Destruval uh, continues to be at the back of the field, but is closing on the others now as they turn down the side of the course for the first time and approach fence number three of the 18 that they'll take. And the grey and last year's winner, El Dorado Allen, has come through now to join the nose-banded favourite Hitman. And Kalashnikov, the well-backed outsider, the yellow on the outside of those as they take the cross fence for the first time. Does he know? Blue and white colours for David Bass is two lengths maybe behind those. And then Fanny and Destruval has now moved past two of his rivals to go to fifth position. And the cheek piece is Sam Brown against the running rails. And then Zanza, whose last four victories have all been at this course in the purple and yellow, is now fractionally the back marker as they move into the straight for the first time and come towards fence number four. El Dorado Allen. Just picks up in front there, landed by about a half length or so to Hitman in second place. They move down to number five, which is their first open ditch. That previous fence, Sam Brown, was a little slower than the others and has dropped to be the back marker. Kalashnikov took it in third place, right in the centre of the blue and white diamond jacket. Does he know? Furthest in the grandstand is Fanny and Destruval as they come to number six in the grey and red colours. Then Zamza and Sam Brown now three lengths or so behind the others as they come the number seven and as they run on towards it El Dorado Allen and Hitman and Kalashnikov the leading chair there's not very much between them and they head then to the uh, eighth which is the water jump for the only time Fanny and Destruval continues to be in fifth position a length or so to Zanza and maybe two lengths behind those to Sam Brown so at the water jump and they clear it and it is the black and yellow jacket El Dorado Allen Brendan Powell mainly white colours, Harry Cobden on Hitman, the leading pair. About a length behind him now, yellow for Jack Quinlan on Kalashnikov, with the blue and white, David Bass on Does He Know, almost level with him. Grey and red for Charlie Deutsch on Fanny and Destruval, Tom O'Brien next in purple on Zanza, then Sam Tristan Davis, black and red jacket on Sam Brown, three or four lengths behind the main group as they come to number nine, the first over the far side. Uh, now to the 10th, which is an open ditch, and Sam Brown is being pulled up. That's number three, Sam Brown pulled up before the 10th, where Eldorado Allen, Kalashnikov, and between them, Hitman continue to be the leading trio. Two lengths away to Does He Know, two lengths away Zanza, Fanny and Destruval back at the rear of the field, now as they meet the middle one in the back straight. All over that OK, Eldorado Allen and Hitman continue to be the leading pair. Kalashnikov still bang with them up on the outside. And then in blue and white is Does He Know or Take This in fourth place. They've now completed over a circuit. Zanza behind those. Fanny and Destruval just a little struggling at the moment as they move down towards the end of the back straight. Uh, they now have six more fences to take. Last year's winner, El Dorado Allen, continues to bowl along in front always with him is Hitman and then Kalashnikov he's three from the running rail now a half length behind those does he know continues to stalk this leading trio two lengths behind him as they turn down to the cross fence behind those is Zanza and uh, just like this part of the track last time beginning to uh, make a bit of progress again having been ridden along Fanny and Destuval is still the back marker though so five from the finish the leading trio are separated by a half length at the most uh, the grey El Dorado Allen. Better leap though from Hitman, who was asked for a big leap and he responded and he's just come through to maybe shade El Dorado Allen as they make the turn. Kalashnikov behind those. Does he know? Only a length off them now. Zanza still there. Fanny and Destuval responding as well. Six of them. There's only about three lengths between them. They've levelled up. They have now four fences to take. 
and Hitman to Kalashnikov, El Dorado, Allen. All of a sudden, Fanny and Destuval trying to get closer, but it was a bit slow at that one. The final open ditch coming up. Zanza is still behind these, and then the switch is now to the extreme left at the final ditch. And as they get over it, it was Hitman who just has the advantage there. Wide on the course is Fanny, it's, uh, Fanny and Destruval with a red cap. Kalashnikov is there. Zanza! Zanza! The four-time winner here has come through to take it up now as they approach the 18th and final fence. And it is Tom O'Brien on Zanza who've got into a three or four length advantage. Hitman in second. Does he know in third position? The final fence. Zanza was a five length leader. Hitman in second position. Does he know behind this? Fanny and Destruval is next. And it's Zanza who loves this course. Going to be his fifth win in a row here. And Zanza heads towards the line with Tom O'Brien to win the bet for Denman. Hitman in second position. Does he know behind this in third? And they are clear from Fanny and Destruval in fourth. 3,000 winners for this man, Philip Hobbs. Um, many congratulations. You, um, Sarah, your wife, and, and Tom O'Brien, his celebration at the line. You, you all look absolutely delighted with that. Well done. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, but yeah, so good. Um, T tell me about this horse and and uh, and sort of his journey and, and where you are with him now because that performance I mean, at the line he's he's won very very nicely he loves it here. Uh, um, it's extraordinary. I've never had a horse that's so crap dependent. I mean, uh, I think I'm right in saying the only time he got beaten here was in the um, Betfair hurdle and he was beaten about three lengths by the winner when he finished sixth in a two mile handicap hurdle. Um, it's just amazing why he runs so much better around here. What do you think it is? I don't know. He's probably got his own ideas about the game a bit. Um, m m maybe he thinks he's getting himself handicapped somewhere else so he can win here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and w was this was this sort of you know his gold cup, if you like, or do you do you think about that race or not? Um, it was all very much a, a last minute thought. And actually, give Nick Pepe his due. He mentioned it, and I thought, well, hey, we can't run him off that 143. And then we thought, well, we'll make an entry and see what the entries are luckily he was in a business meeting he couldn't talk to me at five to ten on thursday when we had to decide because i think i would have been fairly strong not to have run looking at the the <laughs> other runners so the, so we decided before we declare him because we didn't have to run him anyway so if once you're declared you're inclined to run aren't you so. yeah oh. extraordinary uh, glad you did um as far as, as something else beyond this now and you know his, his rating might just get a bit of a hike do you think about supplementing for anything do you do you do you leave it there I don't know, I've always thought about it. I mean, the, the original thought was we'd come back here three weeks today for the two and a half mile handicap chase here. Okay. Um, but obviously now the handicap is bound to take his view on. That might be difficult. Yeah. So I'm, I don't know, I'm, I think we're, maybe a small field is a, a help for him. Um, I don't know, um, Matt Chapman mentioned about uh, um, um, something for the Ryanair, I suppose maybe we've got to think about it, I don't know. Um, Talking about getting horses handicapped, now Monville was very good last time, you, you've waited for this haven't you, so hopefully he's still a, a, a well treated horse for the bet fair. Well yeah, after he won at Ascot in November, we were going to run him in, do they still call it the Labrick, is it at uh, Ascot in December, then that was abandoned due to frost. And looking through all the races he could run in, you know, there was so much more prize money here than in any other race he could run in, we thought we'd just well wait for this. And then of course you've got all the spring handicap hurdles like the Imperial Cup, County Hurdle, uh, Scottish Champion Hurdle. Uh, handicap at Aintree, the Swinton. I mean, there's so many options from now on for a two-mile handicap hurdler that we thought, what, why do you want to blow his handicap mark in the middle of the winter? You know? And today's ground will be fine for him? Yeah, I'd say it'll be fine for him. I'd say softer ground might play to his benefits more because he stays two miles very well. And, and 3,000 winners and an illustrious career for you. Um, how long do you see your name being on the license or being the only name on the license? Um, Johnson White, our assistant, is going to come onto the license as well. He has some um, owners that he'll bring to the table as well, which will help things along. Okay. Um, we're, I'm still very much running the business um, and I'm not going anywhere. So um, I'll be around for a long time yet. When, when is that, that going to happen, the dual license? Uh, very soon, as soon as we can organise the license. Okay. And John, anybody that doesn't know Johnson, he's been a huge part of your operation for some time now. How many years? Uh, uh, best part of 30, so a very long time. And while we're mentioning that, um, my wife Sarah has obviously been very important in the setup right from the word go. Um, but other people that have been with us, Shawnee Mulcair, who's here today, he's been with us nearly 30 years. Um, Lisa. 
Burge was her Christian name, I think. But she's been, she was the, she's a, one of our head girls, been with us for nearly 30 years. Carol Burnett, the other head girl, has been with us just as long. And Joey Cody Batcher, our, our secretary, has been with us for a very long time. Without her to run things, things wouldn't work. So, you know, it's all very important. That, that says it's it's probably quite a nice place to go and work. You must be doing something right. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. hope we can keep producing winners. That's amazing. Philip, well done. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Tom O'Brien with me. That meant a lot to you. Well done. Yeah, no, it was uh, great to ride the 3,000 winner for the boss. And uh, he's been very, very good to me. And, um, yeah, no, it was a great day for him and uh, a good chance left to come. Yeah, um, just on the, the horse going through the race, bit where he came off it, I thought, will he see it out? And then, blimey, he's absolutely, it's one easy. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't have blamed him for coming off it because it was a sound gallop and he was £10 be, pound behind the others on ratings, you know. I, I thought he was going to struggle, but... He just finds reserves when he meets this home straight that he doesn't anywhere else. Cool. Um, and like I've been called a few names riding him in places before because he just he doesn't go like he does there. Um, but yeah, no, it was a great, bold placing and great that it came off. Special day, well done. Thank you. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.